A few days ago, the College Fix published a story about a professor who is set to give a lecture justifying Antifa violence. Let's read a little bit about this because there's some really interesting context to this professor trying to justify the combative actions of Antifa. There's room for one more scholar justifying the political violence of anti-fascists against whomever they brand a white supremacist, right? Villanova University Billy Murray is giving a campus lecture April 24th titled Reimagining Activism as Combative. As noted by Rob Dreyer of the American Conservative, it sounds like she is going to give a lecture on why Antifa is right to beat people up. It says, in this presentation, Dr. Billy Murray will challenge the violence nonviolence binary that limits our understanding of activist practices. Drawing on examples from her fieldwork with anti-fascist activists, she will argue that we should reimagine activism as combative. Such an expanded understanding will allow us to better discern the efficacy and ethics of combative tactics and how they work in concert with traditional <clears throat> nonviolent activism. Excuse me. Lest you think this is a distorted outlier of Murray's work, the communication professor and rhetorical activist scholar has mixed her paper trail with activism against white supremacists and other hate groups. The University of California Press is planning to publish her forthcoming book on her blend of academia and activism. They make an interesting point where, let's take a look at what she says here. The way Antifa understand what they do is that lighting a trash can on fire or smashing a Starbucks window encourages a group like the Proud Boys to treat Antifa as the enemy rather than going down the street and beating up a Muslim or Jewish person. This story is from the, from the 16th, and I'll tell you why it's so damn important. She claims, this woman, that Antifa is trying to make themselves the enemy so the Proud Boys don't beat up Muslims or Jewish people. When have the Proud Boys ever done that? Uh, I don't believe they have. I could be wrong, but not in any high-profile instance I'm aware of. They typically have only ever gotten to fights with Antifa because Antifa shows up and attacks Trump supporters. You see how she's inverting the narrative. The reality is the other way around. The Proud Boys show up to stop Antifa from, from, from knocking down old women, bashing people over the head and throwing Molotov, cock, uh, uh, Molotov cocktails, as well as fireworks into crowds. Because that's what they did. And the Proud Boys emerged after Antifa uh, committed $100,000 worth of damage at Berkeley. Well, you see how she frames it. I'll tell you why it's so damn uh, freaky, the timing, why it's so dangerous. Because it comes around the exact same time a bunch of white racist anti-fascists surrounded Candace Owens, a black woman, and screamed at her and threatened her and tried to intimidate her. Listen, I'm not here to defend the, the uh, policy opinions of Candace Owens, but I am here to point out Candace Owens, one of her general grievances is that the Democrats treat her based on her race and they mistreat her and, the, and, and her community. She is upset over racial discrimination. What happened? A bunch of white people showed up because she was going to give a speech and they, they were screaming at her, intimidating her, insulting her, smearing her, etc. Why should we tolerate a group of progressive left-wing white people doing something like this? We shouldn't tolerate anyone doing something like this. Don't show up and get in the face of a minority because they're speaking out against you, right? Well, apparently she wants to make sure you think it's the other way around, that the proud boys are the ones doing this when they're not. When in fact, it's Antifa. On the exact same day, we see this story. We saw the story of Candace Owens being threatened and, and insulted and intimidated by a group of white people who, in fact, are the anti-fascists she so proudly defends. Let's read on. Her embrace of political violence sounds like the abortion rights supporter who claims she would never get an abortion. Dreyer notes a chronicle of higher education profile of Murray last year, where she said, I draw the line at engaging in violence, but went on to excuse violence. So we read the first quote, and she says, Although Murray sympathizes with the goals of Antifa, she says she does not dress in black, destroy property, or punch Nazis. A reference to a blow to the face that a protester landed on Richard B. Spencer, a white nationalist leader during Inauguration Day protests in 2017. I stand back and observe that, she says. I don't need to be in their way. So will you uh, stand in their way when they're harassing a black woman like Candace Owens because she's conservative? Again, it's not about opinion or principle. It's, it's, it's of, of the individual. It's about stop claiming you are anti-racist and then acting in such a racist way. And then when, and then when you defend violence, what do you think is going to happen? She explicitly favors gutting the First Amendment in response to the Charlottesville white nationalist rally in 2017. She told Vice News shortly after that incident, a change from her prior view, that the best way to deal with a white power rally uh, has been to quarantine it and choke it of the attention. Murray wants to make America more like Europe. 
where anything deemed by the authorities as hate speech is punishable. In the Trump administration, that would disproportionately fall on speech embraced by her own side. As I just made reference to Candace Owen, yes, your rules will target you. There's a story that came out recently where these left-wing activist groups demand fake news be banned. CNN, they they all do these things. And what happens? It disproportionately impacts activists and anti-establishment groups. And many of the left anti-war groups saw their traffic plummet. And you know what? If they won't stand up and push back on it, well, then you reap what you sow. If you defend this for tribal reasons, there you go, right? It's not a good thing. I'll always oppose it. But she wants to come out and defend violence. What do you think is going to happen? When you come up and when you show up and bash people over the head and throw fireworks at them, they show up in force. These people are insane. Her views are in line with her Catholic university, which is asking students to rate their professors for their perceived sensitivity and commitments to diversity and inclusion. Dreher writes, to be sure, Billy Murray has a right to speak her mind, but everybody should know that Villanova University is sponsoring a professor who is going to give a lecture advocating resolving political conflicts through street violence. What if a right-wing professor scheduled a lecture to argue for why right-wingers should beat peaceful left-wing demonstrators up? Imagine that. You can't imagine it because it would never happen. This is Weimar Republic stuff. One defining aspect of Weimar was the the devolution, devolution of democracy into street battles between left and right activists. Here, we have a professor with, lib- with a liberal institution, Villanova University, advocating set- settling political disputes by mob force. Dreyer expects the same sheltering cocoon to envelop Murray, as did the Academy when Dreyer publicized recordings, let's pull this up, with a Texas A&M University pro- philosoph- philosophy professor, Tommy Curry, who said the death of white people is a time-tested form of anti-racism. So uh, I will also point out here, my allergies are insane. It's spring. And so this is from 2017. Uh, this is, ugh, I'm not going to read this quote. Not at all. And this is a different issue, but, but uh, I, I'll, look, we'll, we'll, maybe I'll get to this, but I want to make a point about what they're saying about Weimar. When this woman is giving college lectures to young people and telling them that the Proud Boys are going to beat Muslims or Jewish people, which I don't, I don't have any, I, I can't reference anyth- anywhere that's true. I, I don't believe that's true. But you say this, and the left goes, oh, oh. Then they feel like we are standing in the way of their racism. She has created a convenient excuse for them to get violent. Because what really happens? The Proud Boys aren't at every event, but Antifa does go around smashing windows and starting fires. She is trying to plant the seed in their mind. Do this so that the evil right-winger, white supremacist types will target you in the future and not the Muslims. That's absolutely not what's happening. The based stick man who has been heavily criticized, you may remember based stick man, he only showed up in Berkeley after Antifa was already attacking people. It's inverted, but they want to frame the narrative. It's how they do it. This is a lie and it's creepy. It's creepy, creepy stuff. It's only going to lead to extreme violence. And then we see stories like this. Black professor draws outrage for classroom remarks. A Texas A&M university professor suggested in class that white people dying is a time-tested way to end racism, he says. It's just the latest audio recording from Professor Tom Curry's classes that have been released by a group seeking his firing, as well as the firing of President Michael Young for his defense of Curry's academic freedom. Listen, I don't, I think this is dangerous rhetoric because it's, it's, look, look, the left likes to claim the hate speech they oppose is when people call for genocide and death. It's, it is sometimes, but they typically oppose someone just being mean. This is protected speech, and I do not like it. I don't care who you're pointing the finger at advocating for violence. Stop doing it. Both he and this woman are advocating for violence. By all means, this is America. Say your horrible, horrible things, and I'll know you're a horrible, horrible person. This guy is insane. He is absolutely insane as far as I'm concerned. No, it hasn't generally worked. You're nuts. (laughs) I don't even know how we get to this point. But if these are the conversations happening in colleges, don't be surprised when young people today being indoctrinated, not necessarily by colleges, but by the activists in media, grow up to be insane people. And it's happening. It's getting worse. The first time I experienced this kind of psychosis was Occupy Wall Street, when they were racially segregating people. And it was some fringe activist stuff I had never seen before, but now it's becoming pervasive. Now we're seeing street battles. Now we're seeing active calls for genocide. Let me tell you this. How many people in mainstream institutions are calling for genocide? Just these people on the left. 
Don't be surprised when you say something like this, if you trigger white people and help expand the alt-right. And this is why I can't stand the people on the left. They have institutional power. They're on TV. They push this narrative and it results invariably in one direction, violence and the expansion of identitarianism. I think they do it on purpose because they want Proud Boys. They want the Proud Boys to show up so they can create a villain and then advocate for this ideology. And it works sometimes. Hopefully, hopefully they fizzle, they fizzle up because their ideology inherently eats itself. But at any rate, I'll end there. Hopefully things don't get that bad. Hopefully things don't get worse, but you certainly have the professors advocating for it. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel.